Right, what I want to talk to you about today is how we start a project off, how we use the mind map as the initial starting point. So whatever goes in the middle is the title of your theme or a starting point that you want to use. So just for today, I'm going to look at the idea of fantasy art. OK, now, fantasy art. What I always do is I do a rough copy first. And I would usually work in pencil, but you wouldn't be able to see it if I worked in pencil. So I think about the subheadings, the, the bits that I would take off that, the main sort of categories for that. So if we think about fantasy art mythology, we've got fairies and goblins. We've got dragons we've got wizards and witches we could have sci-fi There may be other ones that we may come back and put in later, and this is why I do a, a rough draft first of all. So if I look at the ideas, the sort of the subheadings that, that we've got there, so I might then think about different types of fairies or goblins or things that um, I can think of when I think of that. So I think about fairies, I think about elegant, I think about wings, um, goblins, I think about um, being more male. Fairies would be female. Um, goblins might be uh, live in a wood. I might think about artists who use these sorts of things. There's an artist called Brian Froud. Anyone that's seen the films Labyrinth and The Dark Crystal um, Brian Froud did the um, the puppets and the animation um, side of that from his characters, his illustrations. There may be other um, illustrators that you can think of to put in there. So you could add those in there because you can come back and research those in more depth. And it can also be that as you go through the, the process of your, your research, you may come across other artists that you can just add in. OK, so mythology could look at sort of like Greek mythology, we could look at legends, wizards and witches. So you've got things like um, fiction, Harry Potter, you know, and obviously you could break that down into all sorts of different areas to do with Harry Potter, the character, the, the locations, the different things that are used, the spells. So let's have a look. We'll just focus on the Harry Potter section for a bit. So we've got the character. We've got the houses and the logos and the cloaks and the wands. We've got the professors. We've got the spells. We've got the elves um, and, you know, unusual animals. Um, we've got different locations. You know, you've got Gringotts Bank, um, Diagon Alley, you know, all those sorts of things that could go on there. And we're trying to break these things down into different things that we could draw. Um, if you look at sci-fi, there's so many different things that we could do under sci-fi. You've got things like the films Alien, um, Species, um, H.R. Geiger was an artist that worked on designing the aliens for those particular things. We've got things like Doctor Who. Some of you might be into things like cosplay um, and go along to, to different types of events. You know, that could be a good opportunity for photographs and things like that. 
Um, so you've got the different characters, the, you know, the TARDIS K9, the sonic screwdrivers, all those sorts of elements that could go into that particular program. And it's showing your knowledge. The idea is, is that this mind map is showing an overview of what you understand for fantasy art and what fantasy art could be. Now, we're not for one minute saying that you are going to do all this in your work. You couldn't possibly, in the space of time, work on all of these. What you would do is you would then focus on an area of interest that you wanted to, and you would break that down even further. OK, so this is the first thing that we see that's showing your overarching knowledge. And then you focus in on the area that you want as your specialist um, area, your specialist knowledge and do more detail there. Dragons, we could look at artists who looked at dragons. We could look at sort of things that um, we could, you know, look at to do with dragons, such as the, you know, reptiles, scales, claws. We're trying to break this down into things that we can draw, things that we can photograph. So just from what I've got here, and this is by no means finished, we could look at... The idea, if you're looking at dragons, you could see, you know, you could get access to photographing reptiles. Does anyone you know have a bearded dragon or a snake or, or is there a pet shop you could go to? Um, the idea of fairies and goblins, you know, the location, the environment that they live in is quite often woodland. So you could be taking photographs of um, trees, leaves, flowers, different tree roots, um, bark on the trees things like that, that you could use as part of your development. Um, for mythology, if we look at the different types of stories, the myths and legends, you know, um, Icarus flew too close to the sun, you know, Icarus made wings. From those wings, we've got feathers. So they're things that you could actually get access to, to draw from. You could also look at existing illustrations. Um, and how other people are starting to, to show that sort of um, style of imagery. You know, it's made up. How are different people making it up? Um, what are the bits that they base on real life things? And where are the bits that they exaggerate and extend on? And that's kind of what we're looking at. So, you know, we're breaking this down into different areas. What I shall do is I shall come back and show you a sort of a more completed version later on. So I've had a bit more time to try and generate some ideas and put a few more things in there. What I would do then is decide what my area of interest was going to be. The bit that I was really going to focus on, because that bit... I need to do more of a mind map and get get it broken down into things that I want to draw and photograph that fit in with that theme. 